Hi DIYers, this is Frank at Alarm Grid. We're back in the Alarm Grid video lab working on the 2 gig GC3 today. Uh, we have the Honeywell 5800CO. This is Honeywell's uh, one and only uh, wireless carbon monoxide detector. Uh, this is a very important device. Uh, it could potentially save your life. Um, you, are, you should, by certain code, have uh, plug-in COs to wall outlets as the primary, and this can be a secondary. In other areas uh, of the country, um, it's okay to use these, but uh, you, you always want to check with your local fire uh, marshal to verify that. Um, the main design of this is to get a signal out to a central station so that the fire department can uh, come and check things out and potentially um, you know, get you out of the home uh, or m maybe even just during that phone call from the central station, get you out of the house while the fire department figures out um, you know, what those C levels, CO levels truly are. Uh, carbon monoxide is very dangerous. It can make you pass out and eventually can kill you. So you definitely want uh, to have you know, one of these devices in your home. So uh, we'll show you how to program this into the 2 gig GC3 um, in just a moment here. First, what you want to do is you want to ca counterclockwise open this unit up. And you'll see here we have the serial number that you can use to manually enroll. There's also a battery in here. Um, I pulled out, there's a little uh, cardboard tab that goes in between the, uh, the plus symbol and the, the contact there. So you pull it, that's the first thing you need to do is pull that out to activate the device. And uh, now we can close this up. And we'll pop into programming. So we'll use our default installer code of 1561 to get right into the programming menu here. We'll hit 2 gig on the top right. 1561. If you've changed your installer code, you can use that. We'll hit system configuration, wireless zones, and then we'll choose. We don't have any uh, program currently in the system, so we'll hit wireless zone one, edit zone. First, we want to choose the type. We'll go all the way down here. There's a specific type for 24 hour carbon monoxide. Um, there, then we'll go down to equipment code. We can choose the icon here and scroll down to Honeywell. See HW here. Now you'll notice that the uh, the 5800CO is not actually listed uh, on there as a specific equipment code number. You can just use existing CO detector, and then we can move down to serial number. Um, here's where you can you can enroll it in using the test button, or you can manually enroll. Um, for today's purposes we will manually enter so we'll open this up and there's a serial number listed here on the A barcode at the top and then also down below so we can enter 0946960 and then uh, we can save that we can actually just go back in there if you did want to learn this in um, technically you can you just press and hold this little test button here there's a recessed hole it does have require a three three second press and hold and it will be very loud so uh, just keep that in mind when you go to test so we'll close this up we already have our that in there um, we'll actually leave this open for a moment so that when we exit programming we can verify that everything's in properly so uh, we'll equipment age we want to be new uh, this is a new device sensor loop we always want this to be on loop one the 5800CO only uses loop one and that will send signals when uh, the chamber in here senses uh, carbon monoxide and send that back to the panel. So keep that on loop one. The voice descriptor, we can change this to wherever it's located in the home. This one for us is in the living room. So we'll just put uh, living, uh, let's see, we'll put this as a carbon monoxide that's actually in the library. That's a, a, a new added uh, selection there. So it will voice enunciate when that occurs. Uh, we can now hit done and move down. We always want the CO detector to report to the central station, so we want to keep sensor reports enabled. Sensor supervision, we always want to supervise this and make sure that it is communicating with the panel. If it ever does not ping back during uh, a supervisory interval, then it will trigger a trouble and we can, uh, either as an alarm company, we, we can remedy the issue or uh, you can just move the move the detector in a better area so that it has better signal with the system. Sensor chime we can keep disabled. Again, this is a 24-hour device so that anytime it trips it will trigger the alarm. Uh, so we don't have to worry about any chimes or anything like that. So we'll go to return to system config, 
back out. We can verify and view one more time that the serial number is right. We have 094-6960. Yep, it looks all good there, so we'll save that. Now we can back out at this point. We're going to want to put this back onto the base plate. And we can now uh, do some testing. So again, uh, when, this, when you test this and trip it, uh, it's very important to note that CO detectors um, require a dispatch of the police if they are received to the central station. So there's no way to cancel a CO alarm, unlike a fire alarm or a burglary alarm, where after it's tripped, you can cancel that. The CO is due to the life safety uh, protocols and with, with fire departments nationwide, uh, the central station must call the fire department. The fire department has to roll the truck to the home or business if the CO goes off. So for that very reason, it's important that you put your system on test with your central in advance uh, and don't uh, trip this and test without doing that in advance. So uh, with that said, um, we don't have central station monitoring on this panel yet. So if you didn't, then you can just go ahead and test. But again, if you already have monitoring set up, make sure you put it on test. Um, at this point, you can take a small, uh, small enough device to get into the test or hush button here. And we can press and hold this for three seconds. It'll say carbon monoxide. We can hit our master code to clear that out. It'll say al alarm report already transmitted. And we can clear that out. So it'll take a moment for that to reset. But that's how you would test this unit, make sure it is uh, communicating. At that point, you could reach out to the central station and make sure they got the signal uh, to confirm that the reporting from the GC3 is working, uh, whether it be an alarm.com radio, um, generally an alarm.com radio on this unit. Uh, in the future, this panel does actually support Wi-Fi, so that might be another communication path uh, through a future firmware update. Uh, but if you have any other questions on your 5800 CO, uh, you can email us at support at alarmgrid.com and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.